Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forums. And I'm Joey at JWonder on the Make Code Forums. And today we're doing something a little bit special. We are testing up something new. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something that Joey and I have been working on. And um, I will say that like all of the new stuff we test, you know, be prepared for it to be a little buggy because we haven't used it extensively yet. Mm -hmm. But and so, in fact, right now to demonstrate that, I'm just going to go ahead and save this. Here we go. Saved our project. Uh, um, Q Phoenix, no, you were like that. Will that will come eventually someday? But only yeah, one but of us will work on that. Only one not, of us. And it won't be together. Not not mouse support just yet. Um, all right, so I'm going to go to beta, and we're going to open up our project in JavaScript. <laughs> do 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 because we've this is our JavaScript project. Um, and ooh, do I not have the latest beta? Joey, what's the latest beta? Um, I think it's higher than that. Uh, I need to pull it up. Well, this would take care of itself normally, but I'm just going to go ahead and force it to give us the latest one. Application, service workers. Oh, my beta was on 112.19 for some reason. Let's see. Unregister. X. Refresh. 113.6? Oh, wait, 113.6. That is the latest one? Yeah. That's what I have, at least. Hmm. Um, why is it not showing up? Good question. Huh. E. Ah. Ooh. And you refreshed on this page, too, so it should have shown up. Yeah. Hmm. Well, as we just said, there are bugs. Um, I wonder if it's because I'm in a pure JavaScript project. If I go home and I do a new project, do do do, and um, it has blocks and JavaScript. It's there. All right. Well, we'll have to figure that out. Um, definitely interesting. Um, but it's okay. We can work around this today. Um, so anyway, there should be an open in VS Code button right here. You saw it when I was in the previous project. And um, we're going to just get to it manually. So now you're going to see the other way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and share this project. And I'm going to grab this bit at the end of it. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And now I'm going to go to insiders.vscode.dev slash make code. Flash, this, hit enter. And we're going to wait for it to load. So, I what's the book on VS Code? E whatever. I'll file on Arcade. Joey, what is VS Code? Um, it's where you type. Um, it's the it, VS Code is uh, powered by Monica. Wait. What's the exact relationship you would describe there? It's the Monaco text editor. It's a place where we write all of our code in the first place. That's really the answer you want me to give. I was just uh, that's, that's on. Exactly, that is what I wanted you to, to say. So it's a text editor um, and Microsoft makes it, but it's open source. It's for, um, uh, you know, this is where we do all of our development, everyone on our team. So we write make code and all of this other stuff. And I think I can say this honestly, you know, I am a Microsoft employee, but if I was not a Microsoft employee, I would still use VS Code. Um, mm -hmm. It's a it's a huge mar uh, aspect of the market right now, yeah. It's it's really great. Um, and uh, now you can use VS Code in the browser. We're on VS Code.dev right now. And Joey and I have been working on a MakeCode extension so that you can open your MakeCode projects. So let me go to this welcome banner. And um, you can see that I have already imported the project. And if I go to main.ts, we can see my main.ts just like we did in MakeCode. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on the MakeCode logo over here. And um, we can see our assets. So we only have two assets so far. We have the cursor and resize cursor. But if I you know, open the resize cursor, um, then we get the image editor, just like you do in make code. It's right there. Um, and I can do start make code simulator. And if I do that, it's going to build my project and open up. And there we go. Cool. We're running this in. Um, so. Because we are doing a JavaScript stream today, and we have not had a ton of um, uh, testing. 
Yeah, like uh, experience doing, um, uh, <laughs> actually doing like projects inside of this. We've mainly just been working on it and doing little one-off tests, but we haven't, you know, done a full end-to-end -end project in it. We're going to be doing it in this today. See how it goes. We'll see if we run into any issues. If we do, you know, we'll fix it. But um, like I said, this is this is still in preview. We have not, you know, released this yet. But yeah. um, you can try it out I, if you want. I believe when we actually announce it, it's, it'll still be considered in preview uh, when we actually like put it out there officially. Uh, one more thing I think is worth mentioning: this works online with VS Code Dev. It also works perfectly fine in the VS Code proper Electron app normal website download that we all use. Yeah, so if you if you download the VS Code editor, you can also add this extension. If you just go into extensions and search for make code, you'll find this one. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and go to what I was working on. So where were we in this project that we had? Well, let me move this over. Um, we have a uh, cursor in Windows, and we can drag our Windows around. And the next thing we wanted to do was make it so we could resize Windows. So we already kind of have support for that. If I hit this maximize my window will get maximized if i hear minimize it'll disappear forever never come back but it will you it's know go void. away um and so um what i was doing right before stream started i started doing the ability to do cursors so cursors on hover so we have this resize cursor that we drew and um, we wanted to turn to the resize cursor when we're over this part of the window so right now i'm just checking the x we want to check the x and the y and maybe make it a little bit more generous than it is right now it's, it's really kind of picky right now Mm -hmm. um, so let's do that. We're going to go over to Window Manager, which is where we are um, doing it. And this will bring us to one thing that's really nice about VS Code, which is the file support. You can have multiple files. You can have a bunch of tabs, and it's yeah. easier than doing a main code. Um, one thing, though, that you'll see in just a second, this is a bug that is being worked on. but um, has not been done just yet. Um, there is a problem with the IntelliSense, so the completions. So um, this is out of Joey and my's hands, but um, it's it's being worked on. So hopefully this will be improved in like the near future. Yeah, I mean this is something that comes with the realm of being, uh, you know, we're on beta of make code and on. Insiders is beta of VS Code.dev, and it's a new uh, release, all sorts of things. Um, this does work in the desktop version. That's where I mostly use it. Yeah, it works It works much better in the desktop version. And if this gets too annoying, actually, we will switch to the desktop version. Um, yeah. Because I, I think it'll probably be fine. I know all the APIs, but, you know, still. Um, OK, uh, so I'm restricting thing. this now. Yeah, what's up? One more thing that's uh, maybe worth mentioning. Um, there is definitely room for performance improvements from using this versus using our editor just because of how things are set up. So it's uh, a lot of times we see people asking for like a desktop app, offline app for Arcade, which we do have for performance reasons. But this, you know, there's much less going on, much less in the web app uh, in this VS Code.dev going on. That's true. It, it generally has better performance, um, but no blocks. This is text yes, only. Of course. That is, I that want is. to do blocks, but we don't have blocks today. So, you know, <laughs> don't don't look for that. This is um, very new. We've got a lot of things that we could do and got to do yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So um, I added this handle hover function. And this handle hover is um, telling us, like, um, in this XY, I'm grabbing the window manager and I'm setting the cursor to be the resize cursor if we are in the bottom right 10 pixels by 10 pixels. So I'm seeing um, if the X is less than or equal to this dot right and greater than this dot right minus 10. And the same thing with the bottom and Y. So if we're in that 10 pixel by 10 pixel square down here, you can see we, we transform into the resize cursor. So what we want to do now is we want to detect if we are doing a um, drag. So we already we already have that. We already um, have the ability to drag the, the window around. So we're already tracking that like state. Mm -hmm. We just need to know that if, um, we were inside of this hover state when we did the, when we started the drag. Uh, Unsigned Arduino has a question. Will make it support putting all the TS files in a slash source directory if you want to? Um, we technically support folders on the on the make code right now. If you type in slash source slash when you create a file, it'll put it under that directory. So it should work fine. 
and it, it should work just fine in this extension too. Um, yeah. If you if you create a folder source and then in pxt.json you're going to have to say source slash main dot ts. Um, yeah. That'll work just fine. Um, we fine don't no matter where you are. Yeah. We will not have globs anytime soon. I'm sorry. So you are going to have to list out each file one by one. But yeah. And the other thing is, if you're on regular VS Code, will it actually download the project to your drive and extensions like Gitlins and stuff would probably work? Uh, probably is definitely the right thing just because you have to test them all. It's kind of in reliability, but like Gitlins, I believe I did test and that worked. Um, Most like extensions should work just fine. Live share should work. We, we got to fix some bugs just to make sure everything's going through, but most things should work perfectly fine. It is a real file system. It's, and yeah. yes, we do use the file system. We actually do here too, except we have like a spec, like if you notice that we went to slash make code slash URL when he logged in, that's like a special variant that we have. Um, yeah, you can use file system in the browser with this. You can, yeah. If you just go to file and open folder, then you can open up an empty folder. And then inside of here, we have a bunch of commands. One of them is import project from URL or create empty project. So if you're inside of an empty folder and you run either of those commands, you'll go ahead and set up your project. So you, you can do it in there like that. Yeah, and there's also a command that's just out of view for adding an extent, uh, adding dependencies. So we're we're trying to add lots of support for different things having trouble resizing this. There we go. Um, yeah, so there's also add an extension. If you click add an extension, you will actually get the same list that you get in the browser, um, or you can just type in whatever you want like you normally can. Um, so there's that. Um, and if you add something manually inside of pxc.json, you can go ahead and just click this install project dependencies and it will um, install them. Um, Untandrina says, I'm assuming debugging will come soon, LOL. I want to do it. I want to do it. In fact, we were talking about it in stand-up today. It's yeah, absolutely it's possible. Time. Yeah, I yeah. don't know when it's going to happen. Yeah, our uh, debugging, um, Richard always mentions this, our debugging is heavily based off of VS Code's debugging like yes. system in the first place. So it, it, they should integrate very nicely together. It's just time that we need to spend on it. In fact, I had the VS Make Code debugging working in VS Code many years ago. Um, but uh, that's a story for another day. Um, anyway. Um, okay, so we've got our hover, we got our drag. Um, we have a handle mouse down, and we have this being dragged equals true. So we're going to store another boolean here, which is going to be um, is drag. Well, I guess is resize drag boolean. All right, and we're going to set this um, right here. This dot is resize drag equals true. You can see it's going to be very rapidly rebuilding the project because VS Code.dev saves automatically and it's going to kick off a build every time we make a change. Um, da, 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 da. Which is fun. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so we have the resize uh, drag. So now um, let's see where we're doing our drag behavior. So that should be inside of handle mouse move. Yeah, right here. So we say if we're being dragged, then we are setting our left to be event start left plus x minus whatever, whatever, and event start top plus y minus whatever, whatever. So that's all good. We're going to put in an if here, and we're going to say if um, this dot, and we're going to do is resize drag. Then we're going to do an else, and this code that we already have, it's going to go into that else like that. Um, so inside of this is resize drag, um, we want to do the actual resizing. And um, let's see, what do we need to keep track of to do that? I guess we need to keep track of what our original size was. Do we need to know original size? We, I guess so. No, I guess we don't. No, we don't. Yeah, we don't. Because we know the cursor's current location, and we know the left and top, and that's not moving. So we yeah. can just make it, you know, there at the bottom right the width to right minus cursor location yeah yeah so we're going to say um this dot set dimensions which it's not going to give me intelligence for but i happen to know is a thing Let's see will proper trans file symbol rename work basically yes. all generic like language service features should work uh in that sense right like the rename and stuff like that um, yeah that shall work Possibly we'll have run into some issues and in, uh, like we mentioned earlier with like uh, it's not being overridden to use only our library and stuff, but yes. 
Uh, so we're going to do x minus this dot left. Stop it. Wait, what's it mad about? You? <laughs> it's it's trying to do autocorrects when I do comma. Um, oh, OK, yeah. How do I how do I turn off that behavior? I don't remember. This one is this is something that I've been running into everywhere. I don't know if it's just recently changed. Like whenever I do something in the Chrome Dev Tools, uh, it auto completes to something else if I'm trying to set a variable that's short or something. Trigger IntelliSense by typing Control Space. Customizing IntelliSense below. Okay, quick suggestions. Accept suggestion on commit character. There we go. We want to turn that off. Gotcha. Um, so we're going to do Control Shift P. We're going to do um, user preference. Oh, there you go. Preferences, open user settings. I'm going to search for that one that they just did, and we're going to turn that off. Now we go back over here. And when I do this, dot left and do a comma. There you go. It's not going to give it anymore. All right, great. Um, OK, cool. So um, we have our x minus this dot left, y minus this dot top. We probably have to wrap these inside of a floor, guessing. I, I'm pretty sure they have to be integers, so. That would make sense. Top. There you go. Uh, how that, often are we going to call this? Maybe it makes sense to add a reference. And here we have to do this dot is resize drag equals false. Equal. All right. Um, so we'll just wait for this building project to end. OK, now we can try this out. So we're going over here, press A, and start dragging. And ooh, no, no dice. No, 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 no. Oh, I bet you we are testing where the is drag is starting. Um, yeah, here we go. Okay, yeah. So we're doing this. This is we're only doing this if it's inside the um, the header. So we're going to go ahead and change that. And then here we're going to say else if um, uh, this. I guess we want to check um, window. Window manager dot get dot cursor type equals 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 cursor type dot resize. Then we're going to say this dot being dragged equals true. This dot is resize drag equals true. We really got to stop this building project thing. It's annoying me. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. Take that, check that out. OK, we probably need to. Um, so the cursor is changing, right? I don't, I don't like that. Also, we should probably set <laughs> um, a yeah, minimum that's a good size. Point. We, should, uh, we should make a minimum window size uh, with the, so that it shows the whole top settings. Yeah. Top, top bar. Um, OK, so first off, though, let's fix this cursor thing. So I want the cursor to um, be uh, the um, resize cursor for the entire time that we're dragging. And probably the way I'm going to do that is, so we have this handle hover function, right? And um, this handle hover function, actually, right now, I'm checking the maximum and the minimum. I'm going to stop doing that. So get rid of this. Get rid of the maximum. We don't actually need to test it, because the hover will function will not fire if um, we are outside the bounds anyway. So um, we only need to check to see if we're greater than. So we have really the same behavior we had before. But um, the other change we're going to make right now is if we are in the middle of a gesture, which we store on the window manager um, inside of this uh, handle hover, um, we are going to, let's see, where is handle hover? OK, yeah, so we do this git top window. So um, instead of doing the git top window, we're going to do this dot git top window. So we're going to do like this dot mouse event window or this dot get top window so that we are if 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 we have a mouse event that's going on the window we're always going to get the events to that one um 
So this way, the hover will always get called and we get resized accurately. OK, and now finally, um, I want to make it so that we um, are not on the edge of it. So I, I think I'm going to like put it so that it's based off of the um, like x plus 4 or something, y plus 4 instead of x and y. Because um, it looks a little weird when your cursor is like fully outside the window while it's being resized. The outside, oh yeah. Where am I doing this? Where is the, here you go, this one. No, not handle hover, handle mouse move. Uh, yeah, this one, okay. Um, so we're going to do this x minus left plus cursor dot width uh, divided by two. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're using cursor dot width here because our cursor is actually taller than it is, but when it's in the resized cursor, it's square. Um, so we're just going to use cursor dot width for both of them. All right. There you go. That's a little better. Yeah, that feels like what you want, even if it's weird. Yeah. Uh, All right, so well, finally, uh, oh yeah, you know, what's up? Just make the min width and set dimensions. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So we're gonna go ahead. We're just gonna choose an arbitrary value for min height. Um. So let's go to where we're defining all of our constants. We're gonna do const uh, min window height, and we're just gonna set this to be. Let's see. We're gonna do header height plus footer height plus 40 pixels. Sure. That's your main window height. Um, so here we're going to do the math dot max of min window height and this. OK, now for the min width. Um, oh, check that out, Joey. Whoa. Definitely interesting. That's why it's good to test things, folks. Um, that was the too much memory used by a tab or something, right? It was just the page dying. I don't know specifically why it oh, died. Okay. All right, we're going to refresh. Ooh. Changes you made might not be saved, really. OK, I'm just going to do Control A and copy. Refresh, reload anyway. How old of a version are we on? Is this when it was still had that bug where it was downloading the, the config every time that it made a change? Could be, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start the simulator back up. Go. Let's see, we have some in window height, so I think we're we're good. Yeah, we already have, have the map. The max max. There, yeah. yeah, so um, resize, and there we go. That's as big as we can make the window. Looks good. That's small, small. That's small, yes. Um, now, for the maximum, the minimum width, um, we want to make sure that we include uh, this, and let's just include all of the text, I think. Um, so we're going to calculate how wide that is. Um, so we, when we uh, create this thing, we store the um, name, and um, we use the font five thing. So each uh, character is five pixels wide. So we just do need to do name dot length times five plus the width of all of these icons plus the padding we have on either side. Uh, yeah. Instead of five, we should probably use the font five dot car width or whatever. But yes, sure. Yeah. It is five. Just, just be good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Be good citizens. All right. Um, so we're going to do um, here at the bottom. Min width. We're going to return this dot name dot length times image dot font five dot um, car width uh, plus. Um, now I'm going to go down to where we're actually drawing all these things so that I can just copy it. So let's see, the last button we have is the minimize button. So I'm going to grab the left for that minimize button, which is this, let's see, left plus width minus one minus all of this stuff. So I, I just want this bit. We just want that? Yeah. Okay. 
Trust me. Um, so uh, this is one minus the header right padding minus header icon width minus header icon width minus header icon spacing. Um, that's good. We just need to negate this. So I'm going to do minus this. Um, and then uh, for we all we want to add another header icon spacing. So plus header icon spacing for the left side. All right, we'll try that out. Let's see what we get. Oh, we didn't actually. We have to go to where we're doing a resizing and actually do good. Math dot max this dot min width comma. It is really nice to be able to use all the VS Code tricks I normally use. Um, most of them work in Harmonica, but a few of them don't. All right, there we go. Do 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 do. All right, we're a little bit off. So let's see what I got wrong. All right, so this is header right padding. Oh, uh, wait, this should be header right padding, not header icon spacing. Um, I don't think that's enough to account for the issue, but let's try it out. There you go. Yeah, we're still, uh, still like an icon and a half overflowing. Um, all right, so um, let's look at this right now. So we're doing name.length times image.font5.car width. So that should be all good. Um, then we're doing minus. Let's go ahead and just convert this while we're doing it. So we're going to do um, plus one plus header right padding. And now we want to do a uh, header icon width times three. Uh, we had a header icon spacing right there. Yeah, I know. Um, we're going to do this uh, plus header icon spacing times three. Why are you? Oh, I see. Wait, no, that, I don't want that. There, that there. Get rid of that. All right, let's try that out. Boop. There we go. Perfect. All right. Nice. Look out. A little, little tiny little window. window. A little tiny window. That's the little one. That's the that's the breakfast window. And then you press the maximize and it's the auto window. Yep. All right. So um, we uh, we got it. We got our fake OS window. That's nice. Um, so let's see. Can I drag this off the edge? What happened? Oh, yeah, it works just fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got here. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Um, now, if you if you are really particular about it, can you how far can you? Oh, you can drag it all the way off. Nice. Yeah, it's gone now. This never existed in the first place. Yes. Uh, to be fair, I've done that on my real desktop too. Somehow, I don't ever remember. It's bonkers to me that you can do that in Windows. It's crazy. I, one time I, always... I got it where it was just the top. The header bar was just off screen to the top. And so I just couldn't, there's no way for me to close. I mean, I guess I ended up doing a, a control W, whatever, but. And so Andrea says it should be a dime because you forgot to use the function you just implemented. I didn't, uh, was, it, was that a quarter? I didn't notice you forget, like forgetting and not being aware of it. You just didn't do it yet, I thought. Yeah, that's so. true. So the crucial second part of that is I need to interact with the sim and be like, why isn't this working? And yeah. then it's quarter. You know, like it's totally fine to write code for yourself and then use it later. You don't have to use everything immediately, but yeah, I don't know. Um, clip it and tell, and I'll I'll review. Like yeah, this is Twitch. You can just clip that. Joey is the quarter master. Remember. Um, okay, we're gonna speed the cursor up a little bit. I'm gonna do uh, 90. 90. Because it's annoying me. All right, and now we got a bit of a choose your own adventure. Um, so we want to uh, do a few things for ROS. We want to have the ability to launch apps. 
But before we do that, actually, we probably just want to have the ability to make apps. So um, yeah, let's start doing that, right? So what what is the first app we want to do? Oh, oh, mm, mm. image editor. Image editor. Um, well, okay, pencil pencil editor to start with. So like pick three colors in the in a left bar and then just pencil tool. And then just what? Just a pencil tool with a uh, color picker to start, and then we can add more later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. So we're going to do um, a uh, image editor. And um, what do we need to do to do this? So we, because we're in TypeScript and we have all of this beautiful, you know, um, classes and extending and whatnot, we are probably going to have our apps extend the window class. And then in our draw, after we draw our frame, we're just going to draw the app inside of it. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go back to our window class and we're going to add something that our subclass can implement. Um, so let's go into window.ts. We are going to do um, a function down here. Where's our draw? There we go. We have draw right here. So we're going to do draw window content and this is going to take in a left a top a right and a bottom um so when we implement this in the um subclass i don't want to be worrying about how much padding we put on in the parent class and all of that good stuff mm -hmm. so we're just going to go ahead and make sure that we um uh, pass that in when we call this this draw window content yeah. Um, and uh, it's not just because Windows responsibility to know anything about the top bar, that's that's that should be handled for you. Yeah. And um, because uh, it looks weird when you just have an empty function, when I do this, I usually just like to do slash slash subclass. Um, mm -hmm. We could also make this an abstract class, but abstract classes are annoying in JavaScript. I don't like them very much, so we're not going to do that. Do we actually support? Yeah, we do. We do. Oh, OK. I didn't think about that ever. I mean, I never use them, so. Yeah. OK. I mean, that's why it's been five years of working on Arcade, and I've never thought to uh, try it. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to do this dot uh, draw window content, and um, the left is going to be 1 plus this dot left. I'm getting confused because the IntelliSense isn't helping me, even though I, I know the IntelliSense is wrong. Um, and then for the top, it is going to be 1 plus header height plus this dot top. Now for the right, it's going to be this dot right minus one. And for the bottom, it's going to be this dot bottom minus one minus um, uh, footer height. There we go, footer height. And there we go. All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and Add a file to this project. We're going to do plus, and this is going to be paint app.ts. And um, we added a TypeScript file. One thing we have to do now is we need to add this to our pxt.json. So I'm going to go over to pxt.json. I'm going to go into this files array, and I'm going to add paint app.ts. And there you go. So now this, this it being included and any code we put in here is actually going to run in our project. Yeah, should we make a command for this? Probably. I was going to make, I had, you know, we should open an issue for this, but I had a plan. What my thing was going to be was if you created a file that was a TypeScript file, it was going to make a notification saying, you created this file. Do you want us to add it to the pxd.json? Then you just click yes. That makes sense. Uh, Okay, anyway, in paint app.ts. So we're going to do um, class paint app extends a window. And um, we're going to do a constructor because make code doesn't like it when you don't give constructors in subclasses. So mm -hmm. I you always put it you, you always want to put it in a constructor because it'll it'll get angry at you. There we go. We're going to do super name team just like that. Um, 
All right, cool. And now um, let's grab, oh, this is angry, huh? See, oh, okay, so it thinks it's the DOM window. Awesome. Yeah, we did a good job naming this. It's a window sprite. All right, cool. Uh, I mean, that that is a, that is one of the things, like, that is a case of what we were talking about earlier, where um, in the desktop version, we don't get window or anything that gets filtered out properly, or I guess never added in, not really filtered out. Yeah. Um, so breaking PXT won't break your project now. Well, I mean, it it won't. It's so your project still won't work. Your project but. still won't work. Yeah, and I don't know. The extension might break in some weird ways, but um, yeah. you know, we should also. I mean, we should also really fix it on our like. It's be like, hard. It is. It is. Pelly Pelly mostly fixed it. It won't break your project, but you have to. You still have to fix it. But yeah. um, so I think it, we've got to. Yeah. We no longer like throw up. We no longer just turn into a React exception, which we used yeah. to. Um, I guess ideally we need to like put it real in your face, like put the Monaco editor up with the PSG JSON, like something's very wrong here. We can't solve it. Help me. Maybe. I, I don't think it affects that many people. I mean, it, it um, almost certainly doesn't because you have to get to the JSON, uh, yeah. PSG JSON editor in the first place. Um, uh, okay. So um, let's talk, let's design our paint app. Um, so um, I guess there is an app we can look at for inspiration, huh? Can we can we just uh, copy V1 uh, arcade uh, image editor? Well, I was just going to look at paint. Uh, um, I guess that works. So sorry, one second, Joey. Let me uh, reshare my entire screen instead of just. Yeah. So you, you can actually see what I'm looking at. Um, all right, so looking at paint, um, we have up here, we have tools, we have um, a color palette, and um, some other stuff we're not going to do. Um, so we probably want to have definitely a pencil tool and a race tool, and then we can do a fill tool later. Um, we can also do a text tool later. Um, but so I think the main thing we want to do is we definitely want to have a color palette. And I, I think this is a good design. We'll just copy this. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, paint was paint always the top bar. Now I'm confusing myself. Was like XP paint the top bar or a left bar? I think it was a top bar. Maybe I maybe my memories of the first version no, of, right. the, of the image editor. Oh, OK. Yeah, it was a left bar. Yeah, you're right. It was left bar. And then the power was at the bottom. Gotcha. Top bar is fine to me too. Whatever you uh, feel like doing, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll do top bar, I guess. Um, okay, so we're going to draw a top bar. We're going to make it a slightly different color. It's not going to be white like the canvas is. Um, and then we're just going to have a grid of colors. Um, and yeah, okay. So let's do that. Um, we're going to go ahead and do um, some cons constants. Um, so first off, we're going to do a uh, palette swatch width. This is going to be um, five pixels. I don't know. That's probably not enough. We'll do 10 pixels. Got to have a click target. That's enough. Oh, it, it died again. All right. OK, well, definitely something we need to fix. Perfect yeah. to see this. Good thing we tested this. Okay. Um, we're gonna do a little work without the simulator open, and then we'll test our code. Um, then we're gonna do palette uh, swatch uh, spacing. Yeah. Um, since uh, swatch is kind of like a domain-specific word that I'm not sure how often it comes up outside of this. Just like I the set of the things you click on, and they become your color, right? That's right. A, yeah. It's like um. Well, or like you go to the you go to the store and you get they're they're either called paint chips or paint swatches and you know yes. you hold them up in your home to see what it will look like if you paint your walls that color. Yeah. Um, okay. Ooh, question: Are we going to do A and B as two colors that you can choose at a time for a left click, right click? No. Maybe we could. Oh, I don't know. I think it'd yeah. be fun, but we can see. No rush. All right. So um, we're just going to draw a nice little grid. 
And um, we're going to do eight on the top, eight on the bottom. Um, I guess we will have eight on the top, um, seven on the top, eight on the bottom. And transparency will probably just be white. We're not going to support transparency. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, this doesn't support transparency in this view, at least. So no I need mean, to support noise. It doesn't really even make any sense in yeah. our context to have transparency. So like yeah. you're not going to be displaying the images anywhere. Um, at least we not right could now. make a website builder. Get out of here. OK. Um, so this is not in the subclass. We're going to draw our palette. So I'm going to just put in a comment for draw palette. Um, and we're going to do for let i equal 0, i is less than 15, i plus plus. And I um, haven't seen this one actually. Oh, OK, electronic design automation. What are you what are you designing, Justin? What are you Ooh. referring to? Am I just way behind in chat? Maybe. I started using KiCad uh, and oh uh, yeah, I am. I scrolled. Oops. Ha ha ha! Now you'll never find it. Well, you'll find it, but hey Ben. Hey Ben. Hey hey. What's happening? Ooh. Oh um, I don't know if you you're showing more of your screen probably than you intended, Richard. I don't think there's anything on here. What? Or no, What's never on? mind. I'm looking at the Teams view. Yeah, no, in the Teams view, I'm I'm sharing my entire screen for you guys. Gotcha. But, um, okay, so we're doing eight times the power swatch width, and then it's going to be seven times the um. Gosh, okay. Now I'm getting annoyed. Can you last fifteen minutes? Done, done, done. I wish this is something that I could fix as the thing, you know? It's no, just yeah, out of our, this this particular issue, I'm not going to get into the specifics, but it's this one's out of our hands, so. Yeah, I mean, it's more um, just somebody else is working on it and doing it. It's yeah. just a matter of time. Um, somebody who has a lot more context and is a lot better to solve this than us. Yes. Uh, so we're going to do screen dot uh, draw rect. Um, and this is going to be, um, uh, Let's see, right minus palette width plus i mod 8 times palettes swatch width. Plus palette swatch spacing. Um, and now the top is going to be top uh, plus uh, math.floor of i divided by 8 times i. No, what am I doing times i? Um, times this wonderful thing. Ooh. There you go. Now, and then for width and height, we're just going to be doing the pouch watch width. Pouch watch width. And for the color, we're doing black. This is the outline, so we're doing 15. Um, now we're going to do a fill rect, and it's going to be filling the color on the inside. So let's change this to, oh, I have left out a comma. We're going to change this to fill rect. And we are going to add one, add one, subtract two, subtract two, and change this to be whatever the color is. So I. Um, and uh, yeah, all right, let's just go ahead and test this out. So we're going to go over to our main.ts. And right now we're just creating a window sprite. We're going to go ahead and create a paint app and change this to be paint.exe. Yeah. Do you think uh, probably getting close to the time when we should define like a button class or something like that? 
a button class. What for? Something you click on that uh, so we don't have to start handling it, uh, keep handling it by like offsets or anything like that. Man, whatever. I'm not going to do that. We can do that someday. Yeah. No, we, we should definitely do that. You're correct. Uh, all right, cool. Well, we're drawing our um, our palette out. Looks good to me. Um, we're off. We have an off by one error, and we probably want to move a pixel down and a pixel over or something like that. Um, yeah. So we're going to go over this, and we're going to do um, the uh, right is going to be minus palette width, and then just minus this spacing, um, and uh, like that. And then the top is going to be plus the spacing plus all of this. Uh, so there we go. We should now have the palette space. Ooh, I messed it up. Wait. Oh, yeah, I fixed it. Yeah, it was just needed to reload. Um, all right, cool. And we will make this one pixel so that we have more space. And maybe change the swatch width to be eight. There we go. All right, cool. Uh, so we got our color palette. And like I said, we have that one off by one error. So, oh, right, this should be 16. There we go. And black shows up twice. We're not going to worry about that. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, Maybe breakfast. someday we'll make it transparency um, 20 streams from now in the future. Yeah. Breakfast is really trying to get out of his room right now. <laughs> Um, um all right. you know what would be kind of cute? You know what would be kind of cute is if what? we made uh, a file save as that prints it out to the console log. And so you can draw images in here and then copy and paste them into the real image editor. That's a future feature, but I think we should do it eventually. It's pretty easy to do. We can do that. <laughs> um yeah, that's no problem. Um all right, so let's go ahead and draw our tools right now. So we want to have um uh, a pencil a bucket, a race, and then maybe a text tool. I kind of want to do a text tool. Um, How do we handle text in the simulator? We don't right now. Well, we haven't done it yet, but... Yeah. Uh, um, obviously, there's going to be a virtual keyboard that pops up. Yeah, uh, never mind. Keyboard I take extension it back. when? I, I take it back because I don't want to do the virtual keyboard. We, we are going to have to do something eventually, probably, but maybe it is just... Uh, you press a button and it pastes in random text or lorem ipsum. I guess we could do, we can make a keyboard app if we want to. That seems like a pain for very little reward. It'd be a very, very good justification to write a button class. <laughs> All right, let me think about this button class. Uh, I was just thinking of it as region and then make it so that you find a button if they're like you have a list of buttons and you find which one is in the area and you click. It and yeah, so probably what we want to do is classes will have a list of the, the windows will have a list of buttons that are contained within them. Buttons have a region that we'll test for whenever we do a handle click event and then, you know, dispatch it there. And I guess we can just give them all handlers that will do whatever. Yeah, um, I mean, the button, we can be very general with it, with button, or maybe just interactable, and it's button is an interactable and drawing, draggable region or something like that, too. I'll just call it button. All right, we're going to go over to window. Everything's a button, just like lots of modern websites. Right well, everything's a dim there. Class but. button. Um, going to add a constructor. Like I said, always have a constructor in your classes in uh, make code. It doesn't like it when there is not a. Um... Uh, important question here, Richard. TSX support when? TSX? Never? Never is the right answer here. Um, OK, so this is going to take in a left top width and height, um, and it's going to have a draw. There you go. And that's our button class. So excited. Um, so this window sprite is going to have a um, button thing, so fun like that. 
Oh, it needs to also have a um, handler. So it's going to take in the left top width height and then um, the uh, on clip, which is going to be of the function type. And we're going to go over here and do, oh, just make that public as well. We don't actually need to do anything special. The window is going to handle all of that. All right. There you go. We're going to subclass this. So once again, I'm just going to put in subclass. All right. Um, so over here, we're going to have a list of buttons. So um, like that. Inside of our constructor, we're going to say this dot um, buttons equals that. And we're going to make a function. Um, nah, I'm not going to make a function for that. That's fine. OK, we're going to go down to handle mouse down now. Um, and Let's see, so we have this thing right here. We're going to put in an else. So this up here is checking, are we inside the header? This is checking, and are we doing a resize? And then inside here, we're going to handle all of our buttons. So we're going to do for const button of buttons, of this stuff buttons. We are going to say if um, x is greater than or equal to button dot left and and x is less than or equal to button dot right and and um, y is greater than or equal to button dot top and and y is less than or equal to button dot bottom then we are going to do um, button dot on click and uh, continue because well, not continue, uh, return, because you only get one button click. Don't put buttons on top of each other. So we're not going to do the. Uh, what are the two types of? Oh, wait, I did. I did left top width height and. OK, that's fine. Better. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say something, but then I realized I forgot the exact term that's used for it because it never comes up. The two types of buttons, the ones that goes in and the ones that go out in JavaScript. When you add it like bevels, you mean like the bevel thing? No, I'll find it. Uh, I Hassan kind of. Shadow Hassan. Why would it kind of? Well, you're you were there, but your camera wasn't on and your mic wasn't on. Oh. I've already given myself a quarter. All right, class swatch button extends button. What does swatch button do? What is a swatch? So um, a swatch is a tiny segment of paint. So in this case, it is the thing you click on right here. If you go to the home improvement store and you are getting some house paint and you get those little paint chips that you can take around and hold up to your wall, that's a swatch. Gotcha. It's all it's it's generally just a sample of something. So you can also have a swatch of fabric, which is a tiny square of fabric. Um, OK, so swatch button, extends button. Like I said, you always want to have constructor um, left number top. That's what it was. Capture versus bubble for click events. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, that's the you said go feature. goes in instead of out. I don't know how I was supposed to get that. The, that. the button event goes in instead of out, right? That's what it happens, right? It goes into the frame and during the capturing phase, and then during the bubbling phase, it goes out to the outermost button. Uh, but I'm going to be honest with you right now, Joey. Um, when I have a problem with that stuff, I just switch it to the other one. And um... that's the right solution. Well, actually, <laughs> the right solution is to never interact with it unless you are really, really upset and you need to do it because otherwise you're going to spend like three hours making it work. Yeah, and it, it generally works. So, um, OK, anyway, we're going to take this and we're going to also pass in a um, public color. It's going to be a number. Um, wait, yeah, OK, that's fine. Um, now we're going to go to our draw function and um, we're going to do this drawing that we did. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this draw rect fill rect stuff and copy it down here. Um, but uh, instead of doing all of this fun palette 
stuff. We're just going to do this dot left, this dot top, and then uh, this dot width, this dot height, and do the same thing over here, except this is going to be plus one, plus one, minus two, minus two. So we have a one pixel border going around to us. All right. Now what we're going to do is um, go ahead and grab all of this junk, this over here, and we're going to do um, this dot buttons dot push um, new swatch button. And this is going to take in a left, which is this calculation we have right here. That. Um, a top, which is this calculation we have right here. Put in a comma. Um, this is just going to be the palette swatch with palette swatch with. We broke everything again. Um, and then the uh, on click, which is going to just do nothing for now. And then um, the color, which is just I. Go. Delete that. Um, and now finally, we are going to go to our window.ts. Um, we're going to go to our draw function and we're going to do for const button of this dot buttons. Um, button dot draw. Like that. All right. Get out of here. Refresh. Yeah, do it. There you go. All right. Um, so let's test this out real quick. We're gonna have a problem, but we can at least see what we're doing so far. We should be able to make it hook it up so F5 runs simulator, right? Yeah. Anyway, um, so there we go. Okay, we have our same thing as before, but we're not doing the drawing that we we're doing before. Let's go ahead and move the window. Oh, that actually works fine. Wait, what? Nice. That shouldn't have worked. Okay, it didn't recompile because um, I have an error in my code. Oh, that's that's a good feature. Uh, we're on the old version. It doesn't get a little grain out like I gave it. Hmm. Comma. There you go. Everything looks nice. Gonna move the window. Nope, still didn't. Still didn't. Right. Um, oh, I see two little red guys. Yeah. I wonder what the issue is gonna be. Oh, we have to do a calculation here. We need to make a content top and content right. That shouldn't have worked. Richard, I wouldn't complain if I were you. Why why wouldn't you complain here? <laughs> this is absolutely when you complain when you know it doesn't work. Do, 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 do. All right, there we go. OK, so being drawn in completely the wrong place. Um, but there you go. And if I move around, it's not going to move with our window. <laughs> so these are our problems to fix uh, in the future. But this is what I expected to happen. Um, yes. So anyway, um, thank you for tuning in. Um, and uh, we will see you not on Monday. Sorry, I should have mentioned this earlier in the week, but I did not know it was a holiday in the US on Monday until today. Um, yeah. It's President's Day. <laughs> The so we're not going to be working. Yeah. yeah, we're not going to be doing stream. Um, and uh, we'll see you on Wednesday. Yeah, I only noticed when Ben canceled a meeting. I was like, "Thank you, Ben. You're you're the president now." <laughs> yep, it was thanks to me. I called it. Nobody's working on Monday. You're welcome. Yep. Ben's <laughs> well, a time traveler, sorry. and he controlled when President Abraham Lincoln and George Washington were born. Okay, I am um, at Richard um, on the Make Code Forum. Um, ben at Donuts on the Make Code Forum. Hassan at Hassan at the Rick Make Code Forum. And I'm Joey at J Wonder on the Make Code Forum. And we will see you on Wednesday, not on Monday, but on Wednesday, we will be doing the mini game jam stream. So tune in for that if you want to see your projects shown off. Wait, so the mini game jam games are due on Monday then? Push they are doing Monday. Wednesday.
by Wednesday, really, but you know, not there are four yeah, of us where we should. It, but the uh, end date is Monday, but we're not, you know, if you if you are a few days late, I'm not going to look askance at you. I, we probably won't even notice, to be honest. I'll notice. I'll know. I'll just keep it to myself. Just break your heart just a little bit. Yeah. It's all right. It's already broken into pieces.